Hello everyone and welcome to another video here at Whiteboard Doctor. We appreciate you checking it out. Weekly video here, Fridays at 5 p.m. Eastern Time every week. We hope the week has treated you well. We hope you've managed to avoid any respiratory illnesses, including COVID-19, that you have a fun weekend ahead of you, or if you are working like we are, we feel ya. Interesting topic today, one many of you have asked about, and that is an update on the newest COVID-19 symptoms. In the Omicron era, we have all these new variants or sub-variants, what have you, circulating. Holidays, winter, case counts going up a bit. Do they cause new symptoms, different symptoms? What symptoms might be most suggestive of some of these newer Omicron variants? That's what we're going to talk about today. A few matters of business. One, shout out to our Patreon page. We keep trying to uh, buff that up to you all. We've been trying to remain pretty active on it, posting regularly. So definitely check that out. Linked in the video description. We'd love to have you join us. Second, shout out to our YouTube community page on our YouTube channel homepage here. We have this community section. We've been trying to stay active and post on that community section as well. So check that out if you haven't and you're interested. Third matter business is our introduction. So 60 second break for the introduction. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you right back and dive into the video. Hello everyone and welcome to another video here at Whiteboard Doctor. Thanks for joining us today. Here at Whiteboard Doctor, our mission is to provide you with free, interesting, relevant, understandable medical education and news for all types of lifelong learners, trainees, and practitioners. We have weekly videos that we debut Fridays at 5 p.m. Eastern Time with bonus medical education videos posted throughout the week. We'd love for you to join the Whiteboard Doctor community and follow along by hitting the subscribe button located in the bottom right-hand corner. We also encourage all likes and comments, even if it is just to say hello. All our video descriptions contain links for additional related videos that might be interesting, so don't forget to check those out. And lastly, a quick disclaimer, none of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read this disclaimer its entirety before moving on. With no further ado, stay well, keep learning, and let's get to the video. All right, thanks for sticking around. So new variants, new symptoms. We wanted to start just by going over, many of you probably know this, but what Omicron subvariants are circulating? Because that will help inform us when we're talking about what symptoms are most likely. And the Omicron variants circulating right now, we've done some videos on this as well, tend to be variants that are more closely related to the Omicron BA2 lineage and BA5 lineage. So those of you who haven't followed the channel as much, we have Omicron, which is the you know, variant that is circulating. And within Omicron, we have the sub-variants. Started back at BA1, and it goes much farther than that to BA5. But even within this, they're sub-variant. XBB 1.5, this is the variant tracker in the USA from the CDC. We'll link it in the video description. But XBB 1.5 is now responsible for 27.6% of new cases. We also have B, uh, BA5 lineage variants, such as BQ1.1 and BQ1, which are responsible for 34.4 and 21.4% of new cases, respectively. So overall, we put down here that BA5 lineages and BA2 lineages, being these four, primarily these four kind of, I guess, sub sub variants, represent about 90% of all new infections in the USA. And the global picture is similar to that as well. And we specified here that the United Kingdom has a similar reflection of Omicron subvariants too. And that's going to become important later because the best data we have on the symptoms these variants are causing comes out of the United Kingdom. So it's important to note what variants are in the United Kingdom and if those are similar to elsewhere depending on where you're at or interested, United States, other European countries, Asia, Australia, what have you. With that being said, cue the transition into a little information on this entity called the uh, Zoe. We, we, we pronounce it Zoe. It might be Zoe or Zoe. I'm actually not sure. So let us know in the comments if you know the answer to that. But there's this Zoe Health Study. Interestingly enough, this started before the pandemic as a nutritional health study, but once COVID started, they completely changed their direction. And essentially what it is, is it's out of the United Kingdom, the UK. And they have this app and millions have downloaded this app in the United Kingdom where you can report your symptoms in real time. And that in real time gives you 
gives these uh, Zoe people the most up-to-date reporting of symptoms based on what variants are circulating that really anyone has found. And this is about the Zoe Health Study. We'll obviously link it in the video description. It was rolled out in 2018, uh, supposed to be the largest nutritional science study, but then COVID happened. And when COVID happened, they transitioned it into a resource and way to study COVID-19. Um, and they were the first to kind of find out what symptoms are most common, that anosmia or lack of smell being predictive during the wild type or early COVID infections all those years ago. And since then, they've had over 4.7 million study contributors who have joined the app. It's resulted in over 40 scientific papers and all these great journals, et cetera, et cetera. So pretty cool thing. And we actually first covered it and the symptoms of Omicron about one year ago. This is a screenshot from that study and, or from that video. And this video actually had got a ton of views down here, 410,000 views. So we appreciate you all for that support. And the symptoms of, uh, the symptoms reported to Zoe one year ago, uh, let's remind ourselves one year ago, that's kind of when Omicron first started circulating. The OG, the original Omicron, variant, which was BA1. And we have obviously come a long way since then, since we're now talking about how there's kind of BA5 subvariants circulating and BA2 subvariants circulating. Back then it was BA1. And Zoe back then said, okay, Omicron is this new variant. And what people are reporting for this new variant is not the classic COVID symptoms, classic being the symptoms most reported from previous variants before Omicron, the wild type, Delta Alpha, all that. And those classic symptoms used to be high fevers, loss of taste and smell and cough. But when Omicron started circulating one year ago, right back in January of 2022, during that big surge, the symptoms being reported were these five. These were the top five symptoms reported to the Zoe app. And most of the people reporting were vaccinated, just so you guys have that piece of information. And those symptoms were primarily runny nose, bad headaches, fatigue or being tired, sneezing, and sore throat. There was some loss of appetite and brain fog also reported. Many are still experiencing those symptoms, but the question now is, with these newer subvariants, right? Again, BA5, BA2, and their subvariants, are the symptoms that are most likely the same as they were during the original Omicron OG BA1 surge that we saw a year ago. And lucky for us, Zoe has continued collecting information in real time. And this is a screenshot from, again, the Zoe website. We will link it in the video description. This is the actual website and it has a bunch of background information and then goes through symptoms. And they publish now the top 10 reported symptoms. And these are from the 30 days before December 5th of 2022. So about a month ago at this point, a little more than that. And the top 10 symptoms being reported now are a sore throat, a runny nose, or a blocked nose, sneezing, cough without phlegm or a dry cough, a headache, a cough with phlegm or a wet cough, a hoarse voice, muscle aches and pains, and an altered sense of smell. This is not necessarily that anosmia that people reported, that loss of smell. And it may just because we're uh, may just be because we are seeing lots of kind of stuffy and blocked noses, which can affect smell rather than that true loss of smell, but an altered sense of smell is the 10th most reported symptom. And this is in the order of the most reported symptoms. So this is the number one reported through, you know, if we draw an arrow through, the number 10 reported. And we screenshotted the top five symptoms from one year ago during that OG BA1 Omicron surge. And you can see that we still are getting runny nose but that's dropped down to kind of two and three, whereas the sore throat, which was fifth most common during that original Omicron surge, is now the most common. The more interesting thing here is headache and fatigue. Those have dropped down a lot. People are still re uh, reporting headache as the sixth most likely symptom, but fatigue is not even on the list anymore. So the, mo the most commonly reported things seem to be these kind of upper 
respiratory tract symptoms, right? Your upper respiratory tract is above your lungs. So a sore throat, your throat's in your upper respiratory tract. Your nose, a blocked nose, a runny nose, sneezing, which comes from irritation of the nose, a dry cough rather than kind of a wet, thick cough from the lungs. Those upper respiratory tract symptoms seem to be the most likely reported with these newer Omicron subvariants. Much less headache, much less fatigue being reported. Now, with that being said, headache is still number six. So it's not like there's no headache being reported. It's still number six. It's still present. There's still some muscle aches and pains, although we don't see fatigue. There's still altered sense of smell, although not loss of smell. But really, these URI, uh, upper respiratory infections, or some people call them URT, upper respiratory tract infections, are the most common symptoms now being reported. The secondary question, though, is these are from the 30 days before December 5th. So, you know, we'll kind of say these are primarily from November. The question is, well, what variants were in the United Kingdom? Because this is a United Kingdom study. So were the variants circulating in the United Kingdom at that time similar to the variants we talked about above, the variants in the United States now and many other countries? And for that, we kind of uh, uh, spliced in a little additional data. So this is, again, everything will be linked in the video description. This is a tracking website of the United Kingdom looking at what variants estimated percent circulating SARS-CoV-2 primary variant families on December 12th. So a little after November, and what you can see here is of new cases, 75 to 89% were BA5. So lots of BA5 circulating in the United Kingdom at that point. And they didn't specify if this was BQ1 and BQ1.1, which are two kind of ancestors, or not even ancestors, but cousins of BA5. And these two are the most dominant in the United States, followed by XBB and XBB1. We'll scroll up and show you the CDC variant tracker again, right? So here's BQ1, BQ1.1, 34.4% and 21.4%. And these two, as we said, are ancestors of BA5. So in the United Kingdom, the way they report their data, this is probably because of these two subvariants of BA5. So at the time of that Zoe symptom collection, BA5, most likely BQ1 and BQ1.1, were far and away most dominant. So the most likely symptoms being reported up here by Zoe are reflective primarily of BA5, aka BQ1 and BQ1.1 symptoms. If we want to take that a step further, we actually, this is a study, we'll link it in the video description. We've talked about this study before. Uh, it talked about BQ and XBB, uh, but the part of this study we wanted to show you was they also looked at variants circulating in different countries, one of which was the United Kingdom, up until November 5th. So the data we showed you above was from December 15th. This data is from November 5th. And the Zoe study, they said, was from 30 days, D for days, prior to December 5th. So it's kind of, this is the earlier end of that. And then the government data we showed you above is kind of the later end of that. And what they showed is pretty much what we talked about. There was a lot of general BA5. That's this dark blue here. But there's also a good amount of BA5's ancestors, BQ1 in the red, light red, and then BQ1.1 in the dark red. There was very little XBB. You can see green and blue. That's this here. There's very little XBB or XBB1 XBB1 at that time. So the symptoms that Zoe is reporting here, these upper respiratory tract symptoms, they do not seem to reflect XBB and XBB1.5 infections, which, again, if we scroll back up to the CDC data, XBB... 1.5 and XBB are the other variants that are starting to take over. And as we mentioned in a previous video, XBB 1.5 is probably going to become dominant. Uh, we'll link some of those in the video description too. If we just go to our page and go to videos, you can see that we have put out a number of videos, XBB 1.5, XBB 1.5, um, because that is what is becoming most dominant. So take home points from this video, nice quick video is that it seems that the most prominent symptoms are 
upper respiratory tract infection symptoms, sore throat, runny nose, blocked nose, sneezing, dry cough. And those are most likely representative of BQ1 and BQ1.1 Omicron subvariants of the BA5 lineage. Lots of complex speak for one of the two dominant subvariants at the t currently. They're probably not representative, these symptoms, of XBB or XBB 1.5. With that being said, I would anticipate, and this is just a guess, but I would anticipate that XBB1 and XBB1.5 will probably have similar symptoms to this as well. They might not, but they probably will. Um, but with time, we will see because Zoe will keep tracking symptoms and we can update you then. Hopefully that helped answer some of those questions on what symptoms are most likely, what symptoms suggest different variants. Is there any difference in current Omicron subvariant symptoms compared to previous and some of that stuff? Let us know what thoughts, comments, questions you have down below. Check out our Patreon page. Check out the videos linked in this video description in the pinned comment. Like, follow, subscribe, all that good stuff. We appreciate you all. Stay well, keep learning, and we will see you next time.